morning. We're here, Sasha and I, and we're going to talk to you about how to find the money. It's day three. I'm fired up not only to be in this chat with Sasha, who is one of my clients, and honestly, I just love you, girl. I mean, if you live next door, I'd hang out with you all the time. So, um, but you have quite the story. Like, you've been able to not just find the money once, you have learned a way. You have learned a way of how to formulate not only your thoughts, but your actions, put them together. Because there's nothing worse than knowing that you want to create something in your life and saying, I'm willing to do anything, but you don't know what to do, right? Like there's that. And then there's the conversation of, I know what to do and people keep giving me advice, but I don't actually do it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect too. So we're going to try and cover as much in the next 20 minutes of day three of how to find the money. Th that we possibly can. So please feel free to go ahead and type in a question in the comments, it's both Sasha and I can see it. Um, and then we'll go from there and, and we'll help you. So the more you engage, the more you fuel us, the more you ask us questions, the more you put us in a position that we can see it and even tweak what we're talking about to better fit applying to your life. So Sasha Sterling, um, let's just, I mean, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what we do for a living. Obviously I'm a business coach. You also, you also help people, uh, build businesses that want, uh, want, uh, supplemental income. And so, you know, uh, I'd say we could both categorize ourselves there for lack of really trying to promote our stuff and really get into the content. So what, like, give me a moment that like, like bring us into a world and, and a moment in your life where you were like, I really want to find the money for something. And what was it? And what was your situation in the moment? Absolutely. It started. It started well, I hear you. What? I hear you. Oh, do you? I hear my feedback. I don't hear an echo at all, but let me turn this down. Oh, it just went away. Okay, perfect. So I remember this started right from the beginning. So the first memory of this, I was four. And I was raised in government housing in San Francisco, super poor parents, but with lots of heart. But my adoptive grandparents, my mom's adoptive grandparents had tons of money, like Picasso on the wall and paid for me to go to private school. So my first compelling why to figure out how to make money, I was four years old and I found a way and I filled this huge jar with coins and quarters. And so my, we were talking before we hit play about you can figure anything out when you have a strong enough why. So my strong why started right from the beginning to figure out, I saw the haves and the have nots, and I saw that we're actually not different at all. So there's something different in the thinking, in the opportunities. And so I got started at a very young age trying to crack the code on how to make money to yeah. give. I really wanted to figure out how to provide for my parents. And um, they didn't know that, <laughs> but I was I was on a mission. And so I would generate money and my parents wouldn't let me give it to them. So I would go give it to homeless people on the street under the freeway. I'd start opening our front door and give away food. I would like find any way to give it away because my parents wouldn't let me give that to them. So then fast forward to being an entrepreneur, um, there's never been enough money to grow the next vision as you talked about in yesterday's Coffee with Shanda. So, um, you know, one great example, my husband and I, we met out dancing and we fell in love, got pregnant, got married and started a business all in three months of knowing each other. Oh my God. Ash and I were three months too. I think, I think there's something with us women who know how, who give up the need to be right about our circumstances. Like, stop. like we're just like, I'm not going to be stuck anymore. And like we flip a switch in our mind that happens to find the money, but it also happens to find everything else because I know a couple of us women who are very similar. We all found our men in three months. We're pregnant and doing the whole thing. We're super driven. So, but it was great because Shane and I, my husband, we didn't have money. We didn't have houses. He was living in a basement apartment. I, would, I didn't even have a place to live at the time. So we're like finding ourselves like, how are we going to figure it out? So we had, we ran to out, I think we had $400 between us. And we said, okay, we, I remember laying in bed, looking up at these twinkly lights and we generated ideas on how to generate the money to launch our first business. We generated self-generated $5,000 and flipped that into a half a million dollar business in less than two years. So there's always Let me share something with that. So there's something that you're doing. So, so I would say step one, if people want to write this down, and if you're really committed to actually playing the game, it's all, it's just a game, 
Right. And so the fact that, so when like, sometimes like, you know, we'll get on the phone with somebody who, or somebody will message me in the inbox and they'll say, I'm so clear that I want to work with you. And you know, how much does it cost? Do you know, I've never asked a coach or anybody how much it costs because, and, and I get it, you need to know the cost, right? But it's like, I never started there. I started with, like you guys did, laying underneath the, the stars, looking up and being in the play, being in the play of like just throwing ideas up there on what it is that, you know, that like how I could actually create it. Like how, so it's like, you're already in the belief, you're in the starting point, right? You're already in the belief that there's a way and so you so you actually you actually were sharing something i think it was like a client of yours about finding the money with something it's like instead of having like everybody typically has the that doesn't make it okay like let's just be straight the people who don't make it to the level that they know they're capable of they have a stop point and that stop point is like I won't sell my grandma this ring because it's sentimental i won't cash in my you know my you know savings plan or you know it's so funny people say they have no money and then they have money in the stock market right or where in the garage or some yeah something so many yeah. people stop and aren't willing to go there yeah yeah so so step number one i would say like every single time i've been able to generate something i want I never go into the logic of if it's possible. I just don't go there because the lot, a lot, everything's just a thought away, right? So it's like the logic stops you because you're within your 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 circumstances. So the flip is is you got to get out of the logic because everybody who's grown grown something that you want or you're trying to create something that you want, it's outside of what you have right now. So you have to naturally think outside of what you have right now. Okay, so keep going. Well, yeah, so that's just one example of self-generating, but the three so main- what did you guys pick? Like, what did you pick when you were like, trying to figure out the money and you, you took it from, what was it, 500 to half a million? Yeah, 5,000 to half a million. So it was a combination. We um, we put a little on credit. I think we could pull 3,000 on credit and then we generated 2,000. I was waitressing at the time, pregnant. And then Shane was picking clothes and selling them and flipping them. So we just figured it out mm -hmm. and uh, got a little storage unit and started to accumulate um, products for our first store. We negotiated our lease. We were ma I'm a master negotiator around like, okay, let's work this out. And so, um, yeah, we negotiated in on our lease without credit or first month's rent. And we saw a return on investment in the first 11 days of the store open. Um, we did some guerrilla marketing, and so we generated a little over eleven thousand dollars in eleven days. So we dumped, we already, so then we just kept flipping it back in, flipping it back in, and it just took off from there. And we also were selling something that people could get behind, which you talk about all the time. Sell something people want, they know that they need, and that's movement level. And that's what we did in our local community. And what was it? It was a clothing and costume store called Funk and Flash. And it was just, it really just hit a need at the time. Mm, that's cool. So um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch Coffee with Shandy yesterday. And I go, I go a lot more deeper into literally for a full 20 minutes about how to find and discover something that inspires other people. So allow it to generate the thoughts that could actually have you go outside of where you are right now. So, okay. So you said guerrilla marketing, and then I'll let you move on to another way that you found the money. So first case scenario is basically you hodgepodged it together, right? Instead of being, and by the way, like this sounds crazy, but I went from nothing to crushing it in real estate because I hodgepodged a bunch of small deals together. And before I knew it, it was like those small deals just keep, kept growing. So I had tons of small deals. So it's like, it's so funny how people like get, dis they get, um, I guess what I'm saying is don't get discouraged if you've got a long way to go, right? Like don't get discouraged if you have a long way to go because it just, it's like, it just somehow comes together if you keep doing all the small steps. I always say stay in the step you're in, right? Stay in your step you're in and do the small step that you're doing right now and it will lead to the next step. It's the people who are not willing to do that because they've already worked out on paper how they can never get ahead that have already lost the race and then you are actually shackling your life for it to not only get worse, but at the very least stay painfully sucky 
for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So you've got to give up those type of thoughts. You talked about guerrilla marketing. The only reason why I want to bring this up for a second is tell them what guerrilla marketing is and what you did, because it is one heck of a hustle. Yeah, I don't know the official term of it, but yeah. um, but guerrilla marketing, how I think of it is just like think think outside of the box, be innovative. Like there's not one straight path to the result. There's a million paths. And how can we enroll people? It's pe business is people to people, whether it's online or offline. So, um, you know, just lots of, I mean, for each business, I'm thinking of different things we did, but what I'm doing currently that is that same strategy is enrolling people, getting connected with their vision and enrolling them in my vision. We have a whole team and arsenal of interns all around the world. We have a guerrilla marketing movement happening right now in my coaching company. So same type of a strategy, like just it's people like fall in love with people, fall in love with what you're doing and then like get to know what in inspires you and then tie that into the movement. Um, yeah. So we've done that in every business. And now in the online business, it's more exciting than ever because I'm following your method. But um, like it's the best parts of it coming out now. It, so, um, OK, so you have had I remember you came. So so she's term, she's uh, defining grill marketing is basically doing whatever it takes, like thinking outside the box. Another way of grill marketing is people who actually go out and they put flyers out all over people's cars, things like that. It's like they just never stop. Right. And so um, it's like mass, like everywhere, blah, like it's just make it happen. Um, so one, so let's just call it a hustle in, in the best way possible, like in the best way possible. Right. It's like, you know, you get up in the morning, you set an intention to talk to 20 people and you don't go to bed until you talk to 20 people, that type of hustle, right? Like you're just committed out of your mind to not get distracted on a bunch of random things, but what was the intention for the day and create that result no matter what. So uh, Sasha came and worked for us at one of our events and she actually sold at the event. And I can't remember how much revenue you created that year that we went to Hawaii afterwards. So we had a mastermind after Hawaii. Just let's kind of recap that moment. Cause I remember at the event's done. I'm in my suite. I don't have my phone on because I shift gears. I go from like all about you when I'm, when I'm working and helping and then I shut it off. My phone goes in a box and I'm all about my husband and my son. Right. Yeah. And then I'm like at moments where I'm all about myself and I'm, you know, the mornings, like I, I've already read my scripture and prayed and all that. So the event's over. You're calling me. You can't get a hold of me. We're all heading to Hawaii in like two days from the event. Share. Okay. So just a little bit of a setup. We had the successful brick and mortars and then they we over leveraged, had the big house, big cars, all of that. And it all crashed and burned. And that's when I found Shanda. And I was like, tell me what to do. <laughs> so I started with Shanda and it was like this with my coaching business because we were cleaning everything up. So we came to your event, I was selling for you, and we are all our accounts got leaned by the government because of all this old tax debt. So we show up, my kids, my mother-in-law, my mother, my husband in tow, to the Zone event, Shanda's amazing event. If you haven't gone, you have to go. And I was selling, and I was like, it's all gonna be fine. We'll, we'll figure this out. But after, literally the day after Zone, everyone in Marketing Mastery is flying to Oahu for this epic mastermind, and I am going to be in that room. So I generated about 20,000 in sales, I think, or like it would have been commissions or something, yeah. 20,000 in commissions-ish. Um, and so, and, oh, and I had flown my assistant and her husband in and I'm paying for everyone's hotels and everyone's food. And I'm like, okay, God, I remember I was on the bathroom floor praying to God, like, God, should I do, like, I feel the calling on my heart. I need to be in that room. I need to be in the room. And God said, yes, you're going to go do what it takes. And so I, I messaged you and I just told you what happened. I was like, is there any way you can give me 50% of the commissions up front? And I, I that was like way more messy, but I was like crying through it, yelling through it, all of that. Well, so, and let me share. So this is kind of the piece where you talked about a couple minutes ago. So like, you know, idea number two about finding the money in today's talk is like, you know, how you were talking about how everybody has this part that they stop at. And so you had just worked with us. You made $20,000 in commissions. You had a whole bunch of people you were responsible for paying for hotel and flights and all this type of stuff. And you were like, you, you basically, not only did you not get a hold of me to see if I could pay you the money, but you also said, 
like, I'll give you 50% of what you owe me back, Shanda. So you were willing to give up half of your commissions to get paid up front. And, and that like, that just, people don't do that. I remember meeting a real estate agent in Las Vegas who real estate agents would make three or 4% commission. She would literally take people's buyers for them. She would do all the work to sell them front end, show them properties, everything, follow up, close them. And she'd take 1% and give the 2% to the person who referred. And by the way, her first year in real estate, she did a million dollars in commission. So I think there's this thing that people have got to get over this entitlement of like, you know, what you deserve. You know, I even see people do this in what they're willing to do in their business. Like you have a changing career and you're like, I'm used to being this. I don't want to like sink down and be that. I deserve more. It's like, you know, I will clean toilets. Like I will. And I do like, I know I have staff and everything around me that does. But if I see a toilet dirty, I will clean it. Like I will, I have, and I will not complain about it. Meaning that one of the biggest gifts your heart can ever take on is losing any sort of entitlement and be willing to do whatever it takes. So I would say step two would be that lose the entitlement and do whatever it takes and don't have a stop point because there's always another deal. There's always another opportunity. There's always another, you know, abundance that is coming in when you get your foot underneath you for that little bit. And when I found your phone, like when your message came through and I turned my phone back on, I called you back to say yes, because of course it was crazy because somebody, I literally had an envelope of cash that people had paid a certain amount of cash, which doesn't normally happen. And it was the amount of money that you were asking for. And I was like, this is such a God moment, right? And so I called her back, I called Sasha back and said, I will actually give this to you. But the scenario is, is I couldn't get a hold of her now. And I looked at my husband, and I said, that crazy woman is probably on a flight to Hawaii without knowing whether or not I'm gonna do this deal with her and she's gonna make it happen. And sure enough, you were like willing to camp on the beach if that's what it took. Because there's always another option because of thinking. And something that I love that you've really come to God and scripture the last few years is I was raised very religious. And something that I was raised since itty bitty is you are, we must have a servant's heart to the vision that God puts in us. Oh, and in that perspective, reminder. who cares if I fail or flail or embarrass myself in front of other people? Because it's not about other people. It's not about the, it's not about other people. And so that willingness to, you know, take my kids and husband on a plane one way to get to Oahu without knowing if you, it's like, it's not all on you. It's on me. It's with God. It's with, I yeah. get to do this. We all get to do this. And business is a game and it's not a given, like you said, to, we all need to, I mean, you know it, but lose the entitlement. We get to do this. Business is a gift. Like I'm right here in my home. I get to spend as much time as I want with my kids. Like this is a gift. This is a get to. Yeah, no kidding. So last piece of buying the money. You are living in a house. You get an eviction notice because they're doing whatever they're doing with the house. And this just happened, right? And you turned around and you got an opportunity to buy a house, right? And so what you're sitting in right now, this beautiful, big, gorgeous house. Yeah. that's like a total dream come true. Like from when shit was hitting the fan, you guys moved into this tiny little apartment that now they evicted you as they're doing something with that house. So it's like, okay, how'd you find the money? Uh, generated it, have an email list. And that's a big piece um, mm -hmm. is the email list. I've been with you over four years now. I know what to do in what order. And so when we, when the landlord said they're moving back in, I was like, oh, this isn't part of the plan. We're gonna buy a house in 2020. Like I, and so, but I thought, okay, well, what else is possible? And within just a few days, this incredible opportunity of this, huge house on three acres it's been blessed by, by monks every year for like 35 years it's like, it's like this dream house and it was like it's like just this deal came together and i got to come up with a huge amount of money and i i generated it in cash because i know how to put together an irresistible offer so now it's instead of this powerlessness that i used to have around like okay what's outside of me it's inside of me and that's because i've worked with you shanna and i've just done everything you've said i've gone to leadership i'm serious i'm really serious and if anyone watching wants to like pm me and talk about it like i 
I, I'm really serious. Like give credit where credit's due. Like you have been my absolute hero and I'm so grateful that you do what you do because I know you don't have to do what you do. You could just have your method and like keep it tied up, but you share it so We're have our method and just sell it automated online and never talk to somebody, right? Totally. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so first of all, thank you. And second of all, um, the formula works, but the formula works when you put your willingness on top of it. You know, and so I think money is very easy to find. I, I've, I I constantly say to myself and people around me is like, it's like money is so easy to find. It's so easy to create. But if you get stuck in the worry, you know, scripture does say worry is a sin, right? We sin all the time, but it's like, I don't know why that's always helped me. It's like every time I've like knocked into worry anywhere, I know that that's not going to end well. And so just playing in this conversation of what if and getting hyper focused on one thing that you're committed to actually like creating a result with versus seven. So if you've got more than one business that you're running right now and one's not up and flying high, I recommend that you choose one. Not that you can't do all of them. It's just choose one for right now that you could go deep on and keep applying. How do I find the money for that? How do I find the money for that? I mean, at the end of the day, Nobody builds alone well, right? Nobody builds alone well. I mean, you could look at every great entrepreneur, every great successful person, I mean, every great leader on the planet, and you will see an army of people that follow them. Well, they follow them because who they are behind closed doors is nothing short than sparkly. I hate to say it that way, but it's like they're like, they're, um, ah, oh God, I never thought I was going to share this, but I'm going to share it. I love it when things just come up. So I, um, so my clients know this, my marketing mastery clients know this only and that I was, I, I was pregnant like just recently and we thought everything was going to work. Everything was great. And then all of a sudden we had a missed miscarriage and this just happened, like literally just happened. And, you know, and I was telling Sasha, she asked, how's the pregnancy going? And then Crystal was over the other night. How's the pregnancy going? I'm like, I had my other girlfriend just over like last night. It's like, okay, how's the pregnancy going? I'm like, oh, it's not. And I shared with them, it was, we had a missed miscarriage, which happens to less than 1% of women. And I was like, they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, honestly, like I saw the benefits of being pregnant and I saw the benefits of not being pregnant. And I feel like it's been part of the plan. And I feel like this missed, missed uh, miscarriage was part of the plan, which I feel like I actually have passed some sort of universal test or universal like piece of just like learning how to stay. You know, we're always told in every spiritual context to like, don't be attached. Right. And it's like, I truly am not attached and not giving up like the, the, it was put in my heart for a reason. And this is part of my story. And I don't know why it's part of my story, but I'm, I, I have not, I haven't cried. I haven't anything where this is my second miscarriage. The first one, it was like a huge emotional, you know, because I never experienced that before and didn't expect it. But I, you know, still let a mastermind, the Hawaii mastermind she was talking about, I miscarried at. You know what I mean? So synchronistic, right? How we, how that came up here. And it's like, like you have got to be able to walk through the struggles and not let them take you down or make you like a mean person behind closed doors. You like, because everybody around you, if you, if you want anything to succeed, it's going to take either a family or a husband or a wife to get on board or like, you know, clients and customers, like this is all a movement. I mean, business that takes off becomes a movement and it requires you to not be a judgy, broken down, triggered person behind closed doors. So the money really is easy to find, but it's from this place back here where you're willing to say, I'm not a victim. Right. I'm not a victim that, you know, the IRS came in and took all of your money, Sasha, the day right before Christmas. And the kids don't I don't know if you end up getting Christmas presents for them or not. But I remember you crying, going, oh, like, really? Again? And then it's okay. like I sold my wedding ring. It was yeah, it was like this was even before the Oahu thing. I sold my wedding ring. We paid the pg and &E. And then we bought like two presents for each kid. And my older daughter was like old enough at the time. She was like five. Now she's 10. And she bawled the whole Christmas. It was like, oh, you know, yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. 
you know? Yeah. And, All she, that was- and she learns. And she learns. Yeah. She learns. You know what I mean? Like, like my son said the other day, he wanted to empty his piggy bank and give it to, you know, give it away to the kids who don't have toys. And he's an only child right now. <laughs> and and literally that was from taking him to shop for toys for tots. And he had a toy he really wanted. And I wouldn't let him have it because it wasn't about him. It was about him giving it away. And he threw it in the cart and he had, a, he was like, okay. And he threw it in the cart. He's only three. And then he had a meltdown on the floor and then he wiped off his eyes. He got right back in the game of putting things into the cart for the other kids. And then a month later, he tells me he wants to give his money away to the kids. Like, so it's like, we've got to stop giving in to ourselves, to our triggers, to our kids, and just kind of like giving ourselves what we need to be able to feel better. We need to feel the pain and do it anyway. There's a book, feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm telling you, you can find money today. Oh yeah. You can find oh, yeah. money. You can absolutely find money today for anything that you want, but it's up to you. Will you be the person that it takes to be able to believe that there is a way and somebody's done it before and you can tap into that same thought and you could find the money today. So with that being said, any final last words, Sasha? No, I think we covered it. <laughs> well, find the money. Think differently and don't do it alone. That's amazing. Don't do it alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's end on this. So you can either, you know, you can either be the person that struggles on your own, or you can be this person that figures it out today. You can sell something that inspires you and inspires other people, or you can chase the money. But at the end of the day, if you chase the money in the way that you have to have it, and there's a need and desperation, it's like a woman chasing a man, he'll run, right? If you want to be at the flip side where the man is able to single focus on a woman and he ends up getting her because of pure determination and being unattached to whatever it is that she says, a woman can say, I'm sorry, I'm not dating right now. And a man will grab onto the right now and still pursue her and be unattached. And I don't know what it is, but they always seem to get the woman in the end because they never seem to let go. So I would recommend that you relentlessly and unattachedly, unattachedly, I'm not sure if that's a word, but go after it today and take this day three of how to find the money and realize that you have two women sitting in front of you who have done it over and over and over again. And so can you. So here's to you having a blessing today. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for how to find the money with some more tactics on how to actually do it. All right. Thanks, Sasha. Bye, you guys. Please share. Please share this live. It's how I know that you like this type of content. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.